everybody. So uh, here we are, ready to plant a tree. First time live on location. Couldn't be any more excited. Pascal, congratulations. You got a beautiful tree here. Um, if you guys remember, uh, when I was talking about trees the other day, and I was talking about how long uh, they lived for, uh, and I said the bristlecone pine um, could live up to 5,000 years, well, this tree here is a bristlecone pine. So Pascal, I hope you uh, have a 5,000 year investment here. So anyway, uh, what we're gonna do is we've, uh, we've got the spot picked out. Um, and I lied, it's not a bristlecone pine. It's a red cone Norway spruce. So it's only gonna live 2,000 years, Pascal, so you got off the hook with that one. Um, ouch, it's prickly too. So what we're gonna do is exactly what we talked about. I personally take off all my tags. It's aesthetic, I don't want it choking the tree at a later date. We're going to move this. I've already measured out my location. So we're gonna start digging. Now remember what I said. I'm gonna use the handle of my shovel. And I'm gonna go through my pot as close as I can to the center. That's how big my root ball is. So I wanna go twice that. So if that's my marking there, I go to there, and I know I need to dig to that. That's my circle, that's what I'm digging. Okay, and then we'll do height once we get going here. So, away we go. And you'll find, I like this kind of shovel, I like a long handle one, but again, not one size fits all. Maybe you uh, prefer a short handled one. Um, maybe, maybe you prefer a fancy one if you're digging in a lot of clay, something like this. I don't particularly like this one. Uh, it does have a purpose, that's why I brought it. We don't get enough soil up with this one. So I'm gonna go back to my regular shovel here. All I'm doing is just getting rid of the sod and cutting my hole. We don't need this sod. This sod is gonna be living in the compost bin very soon. You guys should have brought somebody to help you clean up. What's Harry doing today? So we're just cutting around here. What you can do to make it lighter and easier to work with is literally flip your sod like that. Now this is why I like my little shovel. And break it up. And you can see why doing this why we want to use a compost. You can see what we talk about when we say the heavy clay. So, and again, not necessarily bad. Not great for, uh, for young plantings or soft plantings, but it's not a bad medium to grow in if you're doing a tree that needs a little bit of support. It needs something to hold it. It needs some moisture retention. So again, around to here. Now, I didn't bring a mulch for this tree. If you guys remembered, we talked about that. This tree is ridiculously hardy. It doesn't need it. It's gonna do amazing in this climate. It's gonna do amazing at this time of year. I'm not worried about it. But you'll see, I've already got my hose set up. Remember I was talking about the importance of the water? That's why I've already got my hose, because no matter what, it is going to need to be watered. So, that. I hope I don't end up with a plumber's crack. <laughs> that would be a nice. Always shoot in front of me, Brandy. Okay. <laughs> so this is the kind of soil we get where people tell us, oh, my soil is no good. Do I need to replace it? Absolutely not. This soil is fine. Is it the best soil I've ever seen? No. But you know what it is? It's just depleted. It just needs some additives in it 
and it needs that clay broken up. But there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's not contaminated. It is just literally unused and depleted. Stop breaking it up. There you go, I can get a fine soil out of that. There's nothing wrong with the soil itself. Okay. So we've got our hole dug and we can clean up the edge later. That's neither here nor there. We do have a time limit. So we're gonna focus on it. Next thing, a depth. So same thing, I'm coming in with my shovel, putting it to there. That's a little below the lip. Do that. So that's my depth. Okay, another trick. I don't like doing this because it's beveled. You can always use this part of your shovel since that's the part that's going in the ground. And I know it's just above my kickstand. So, And one thing I brought, I have no idea if I'd need it, but I've done too many jobs where it's gone the other way. I brought a pickaxe because you never know when you're going to hit a rock or another tree root or an old tree stump or something like that. Um, and trying to get through that with a shovel, you're either going to break your back or break your shovel. Honestly, if you have to pick, break your shovel. You can always get another shovel. The amount of uh, gardeners I know, the amount of people who do this kind of work, who've got bad backs from constantly trying to do things like that, it's, uh, it's not fun. And that, that'll stay with you. That kind of stuff isn't good. So, we're getting to our depth already. Take a bit more out here. Now remember, I said I was going to go deeper than I wanted so that I could backfill with the good mix that I'm going to make. So all I'm doing now is I'm just going to scoop this clay out. And you should see this is roughly what you want your hole to look like. Now it's always going to be different depending on the size of your root ball. It might be, uh, you might get one of those seven gallon ones. That's no, they're very deep. So your root ball is always going to change depending on your tree. So now, if you want to check, drop your rake across put your shovel in. So I'm deeper than I need. I can go a bit deeper, I can live with that. No big deal either way, but I've hit my depth. So, take a little bit more out. Now, I'm using the, oh, you shouldn't kick your tools. Um, I'm using the Analita Super Compost. I love this stuff. Uh, it's got biochar, it's got worm castings, it's got compost, forest refined, peat moss, and it's got mycorrhiza built into it. So it is an excellent, excellent compost. It's, it's literally my favorite one. We just brought it in uh, and I literally couldn't be happier with it. So what I'm gonna do, if you remember what we said, I'm just going to take a healthy handful here. I'm just going to throw it in the bottom. Oops. That was from humic acid I was mixing uh, the other week when I was trying a new top blend on my house plants. As you can see, I'm adding, and if you remember, like I said, I'm putting some of this back in. I don't want it all to be just compost. That doesn't do anybody any good. I want some of this clay mixed in with it so that those roots get used to fighting through that. Because look at this, okay? Look at that. Put the roots in that, 
No problem. Put them in that, big problem. Mix the two, you've got a nice balance. So that's what we're going for here. So all I'm gonna do is just break up the bigger chunks, give it a mix, and, and a few big chunks on the end of the world. What you don't want is you don't want large clods like that because you try and backfill with that, you're not gonna touch it. Air's gonna get in, uh, it's gonna dry out quicker. You want it to be so the exact same soil, you saw me dig it out the same hole, that's totally fine. Not great, totally fine. Okay, same soil. So now, I'm gonna pull it back a bit. One thing, I see so many people when they grab a tree, grab by the trunk, please don't ever do that. You go to lift it like that, you pull it like that, you can actually separate the crown from the roots. You'll do damage, you won't notice right away. Season, two seasons later, your tree is dead. Just like if you remember when we were taking out a house plant. Apply some even pressure around on your pot. You'll notice I'm staying low, I'm not standing up doing this. I don't want the tree to get top heavy and fall out. Now, I'm gently going to reach in. And that's it. Look at that root ball. Holy moly. This guy is ready to go. That is, that is beautiful. And what a great day. Like I've seen in the fall, I don't have strong sun. I'm not dripping sweat, so I still look handsome. That's the most important thing. Brandy's shaking her head. Thanks, Brandy. That was really good for my ego. Um, I'm talking about how beautiful that is. Brandy's like, I say I am handsome. All right, thanks, Brandy. You're welcome. So now we want to put this in. So I put that in. Immediately I can see, because of experience, I'm at a perfect height. Let me put my shovel across and show you guys. So there's my existing thing. I slide that in. Look at that. Flush here, flush here. Perfect height. Exactly what I'm looking for. So now, same thing. I'm going to take compost. And I'm going to dump a bunch of compost in. So when I was saying do a 50-50 blend, I don't mean you have to get a bucket and a wheelbarrow. I don't mean you have to blend it perfectly and measure it all out. You can put them in separately, but you want them blended, and you're going to see how it blends together pretty soon. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. Ooh, that would have sucked. As you can see, I personally don't wear gloves. Uh, if you need gloves, please, please wear them, especially dealing with uh, prickly guys like this. Um, I've done enough trees, it doesn't really bother me. So now you can see I've covered the first two inches maybe of the root ball. That's all I'm doing right now. Now this tree is tricky. It's weeping, the branches are all over the place. We've got something going off over here. How do I tell if this is straight? Okay, so what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at my primary stem down here at the bottom. And that's what I'm looking to see if that's straight. No point looking at my canopy. This is what I need. So as long as I know that's straight, as it grows, the rust will weep down and come over. If it's on an angle, it might all cascade that way. Eventually, it'll come out the ground. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at the top. That can adjust because of light. I'm looking at that. So I can tell you right now, this way we're pretty solid. I can't see it at all. So what I'm going to do get in here, gonna move that, we're not good. We're over that way. Again, do not grab your stem, reach to the root ball, lift it, and that loose soil and compost and clay that you've just put in, just tuck under it. Just lift it like that. And see, I've tilted the entire tree an inch an inch and a half without putting any stress on the tree whatsoever. And now look at that. I can see right away we're sitting much straighter and I know I didn't change that angle so I lifted it that way. Now we're ready to go. Now we're ready to plant. We've got our foundation. 
So now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start back filling with this. And like I said, as you come across the big chunks, break them up. It's good stuff. If it's too hard for your hands, if it's not something that you're used to doing, you don't wanna get your hands dirty, you can't get a grip with your gloves, use your shovel. Literally, that's all you've got to do. And if you want to do your blend ahead of time, go for it. Pour some compost on there. It's not like a, a Def Leppard song, sorry. Pour some compost on me. I digress. You don't give me a microphone, I'll start singing, I promise. Next up, I'm dancing, getting a blend. And that's all I'm doing. Now, remember what I said about firming it down, okay? I don't want to see you using your boot. I really don't. If you have to, if you're putting the tree in and it keeps tipping, it's okay to knock soil in to the root ball with your boot. Do not come down on it. This tree, I'd be crushing branches, I'd be crushing roots, and I'd be compacting soil. So, same thing, if you remember, we're gonna go all the way around. Oh, look at me, I'm a tree hugger. Um, and I'm just firming it down. I'm using my hands, I'm using my arms, and I'm pushing it down. I'm bringing in some more. Again, that good blend. Break up the bigger chunks. And this, this compost, honestly, it's, it's Annalita. They're a uh, Albertan company. Uh, and the worm castings, and the biochar, and the superchar, and the worm cast extract that they've done is, is next level good. Uh, they're fast becoming um, one, of my uh, one of my favorite products, one of my favorite companies. Okay, so now we've got that. And remember, one of the most important things that we need to do is we need to make sure all of the root ball is covered. I'm not kidding you, I've seen trees planted like that. They don't do great, okay? Even if you mulch that, it's not gonna do good. Those roots need soil, they need earth. So, again, we're just breaking up our big clumps. And I know a lot of people, they go, well, why are you doing that by a topsoil? Again, you're not doing your roots any favor. You're putting in uh, veggies in a pot, sure, go with a potting mix, go with a herb and veg mix. Don't make them fight at all. But this guy needs to live, this guy needs to live for hundreds and hundreds of years. You've got to make them fight, you've got to make them, st you can't do everything for them, because honestly, all you're going to do is weaken it overall. Much like the watering, make it fight for the water, because then those roots are going to go deep. You give it water every time it needs, the roots are like, oh, I don't need to do anything, I've got everything I need. So, you wanna go in, be sure to not bury any branches. So, what I'm gonna do now, I've gotten to this point, we're gonna add some more compost. I've really gotta do better with my garbage. That's how I clean up at home. I do clean up, but I just throw it into whatever I see, so. Oops. Better than leaving it on the counter, though. <laughs> Don't worry, Pascal. We'll clean up. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm really thinking I should have brought Harry. Um, um, um. So you can see now, I'm just going around. And what I'm doing here, making sure my roots are covered. You'll notice I'm not filming in. I'm filling up that two inches a little bit more first. I'm gonna come all the way around, again, making sure, mm, it smells like Christmas. I'm gonna make sure that there's no branches buried. We know there's a great blend of compost in there. We know it's a great compost. We know there's mycorrhiza. We know there's peat moss. We know that this tree is hardy. It's in a great spot for light. I already discussed all of that with Pascal. You'll remember we discussed that this week uh, about light at this time of year. Now I'm firming down to see how much more I need. So again, you'll see I'm not putting my boots to it. 
There is no need. This clay is going to hold it up just fine. I don't need to be stomping down on that. That would be bad news. I'm going to form that clay together again. It's not going to be good. Besides, the more soil I get in the hole, the less I have to clean up. And I hope you guys realized, Randy and I did, before we started, we did the most important thing, and we got coffee. Okay? Most important job, uh, the most important thing in any landscaping job, get coffee. If it's a summer, I will allow you to get water too, I guess. So look how much that's compacting, just using my hand. Okay, I don't need to put my boots to that. We've still got some roots. We don't want that. So you can see, bringing in more soil. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we're up to the point where the top of my tree can breathe, but I don't have roots exposed. Most important thing. Oh, we had a casualty. Broken branch, it's gonna happen. And I'm checking all around now. I have no more exposed roots. Look, you can see down in here, all the way here. Oh, no, we got a couple. Okay, so what do we do there? That root is poking up from the root ball. All I'm gonna do, I'm just gently gonna cover him. Now, a blessing about this tree, he's gonna shade his own roots from the sun and the elements. So I'm just gently, again, gonna firm that down. Voila, my roots are protected. And we have no exposed roots all around this tree. Okay, done. So now, what I'm gonna do is take the rest of my soil here. And what you can do if it's especially dry, the day before, and we didn't get a chance to do this for obvious reasons, is you can water the area the day before and it's gonna make this soil a lot easier to work with. Um, it's gonna, it's still gonna be heavy. Uh, you will get more messy. Uh, as you can see right now, I'm primarily getting dusty, not muddy, um, but it will allow this to break up easier. This is basically some baked clay. So I'm breaking this up nice and loose, but I still want it to be able to hold. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start building my tree well. And all that means is I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna go around and you can see, literally like I said, I'm building a sandcastle. I'm just building a wall. It doesn't have to hold up too much and I'll show you why soon. Rocks, I don't personally put them back in. Not gonna hurt. And you would think with adding the amount of compost, there'd be a lot more soil uh, to go to the compost bin. You'd be surprised how much fits back in once you fluff it up. Again, it's a heavy clay. It's baked itself into that, and we've broken it down, and we've floofed it up. Now, the main purpose of a tree well is to tell me, so I know how much water to give a tree. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know that they need to give any water, 
Some give it too much. Some, I've seen people leave uh, drip line sprinklers on 24 seven. Again, you're not doing it any favors. Either, either way, don't give it too much, don't give it too little, there is a correct amount. So you can see my tree well is what? Two or three inches? Okay, now what I'm gonna do here That's literally not worth bringing back. So I'm going to top dress. And I'm just going to mix that across the top. The water, the rain, the elements. I'll run all that down. Voila. Now, most important thing. See, people make this mistake all the time. Always keep these bags, they're great for garbage. Before you add water to any job, clean up. Otherwise, I'm turning this to mud and my cleanup is gonna be just dreadful. Plant a few trees in the rain, you'll see exactly what I mean. And the rest of that, back here, will go in the compost bin. Okay? So now, and now I'm starting to sweat because the sun came out. Um, check your setting on your hose. That's the one you want. You don't want to do a jet and blast all that soil away from the roots. You want something nice and gentle. Oh, I've got something. Better. <laughs> Again, you notice I'm trying to be careful that I don't smash my tree well. I'm trying to keep the water away from my garbage pile so I'm not left with mud. And you can see how much this is drinking up. It's barely filling, it's already percolating through. That's great. That means it's getting down to the roots. It's doing now. This is how it works. It's going to take you some time. Some people get impatient at this stage and then they'll put the hose on jet. Don't want to do that. Just want to trickle fill it. It's, we've just shocked this tree. It's been happily sitting in a greenhouse with all of his buddies, having a great summer, and now suddenly he's like, hey, what? Hey, hey, presto, I'm here. No, we have to kind of baby it in. So you don't want to use a jet. You don't want to blast it hard. You just want to fill it with water like I'm doing. And this will be percolated all the way through. Coming around to this side. Always make sure you give an even watering all the way around. You fill that side, maybe this side isn't getting it. Maybe there's a, a big clump that isn't allowing the water to percolate through properly. And I know a lot of people see this stage and they go, holy moly, that seems excessive. Yeah, kind of does, but it's what the tree needs. How dry it's been lately. Now I'm not going to come to the top of my tree well because that's starting to fill nicely now. 
and you can see got an inch and a half of water there. So I'm not going to come on this one. I'm not going to come all the way up to the top of my tree well. I've already flooded past the lawn. So I'm already up to this height. You can see the grass in here. And if you have to, overwater, don't underwater. If it's outside like this, the water will percolate through. It can't do anything if you're underwater. There you have it. There you have it. The boring part is the cleanup. And there you have it. We just panned out of Norway. Look at these little cones. These are all going to turn into candles next year. Tight little buds. It's going to get ready to go down. We're going to fill it like that. Well, we're not. But Pascal is going to fill it like this every day for the next two weeks um, to really, really get those roots growing. That's going to percolate through by tomorrow morning. That's going to need a drink again. We're going to fill it up. It's going to drink again. Look at that sun. It's got nothing but clear sky and sun around it. That sun is going to hit. The photosynthesis is going to happen. We've got that mycorrhiza and the peat moss and the compost. Those roots are going to start digging in right away. And this guys he's going to do just great here. So that's it. Uh, our first uh, on location job. We planted a tree. I'm glad you could come along with us. Any questions or comments, let us know. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow for Wine Shirt Friday. Bye, everyone.